everyone, welcome to the Artist Experience. Our guest today is Tony Liberatore. He's a storyboard artist, animatic artist, writer, and director. Tony, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I um, as far as art goes, um, uh, I grew up back east. I uh, started drawing at a very young age. Um, I was very interested in um, animation at a very young age. Uh, I was a big, big fan of... Um, uh, date myself here, but uh, early Z early '80s anime cartoons like uh, Thundercats and um, you know Transformers and the Mighty Orbots and that type of stuff. <laughs> and um, you know, I was totally blown away by that. When I was a little kid, I told my dad, I was like, "Hey, I want to make an animated cartoon, animated TV show." Mm -hmm. Completely ignorant as to what goes into it. <laughs> and my dad was like, "Sure, son. Yeah, sure, you can do it." So, you know, he ordered some animation cells for me and a little table, and oh, I was wow. growing up stuff and. You know, I had no idea I was ever going to announce anything, but it's weird. It was like my first introduction to storyboarding in a way. And it just kind of came naturally because I wanted to tell the story that I had in my head. Right. But I was like, well, how do you lay this out in order to tell the story? So it just kind of came natural. It's like, okay, well, I need to do these little panels here in order to tell mm -hmm. the story visually that I'm trying to get across. And that was really like kind of like the first time I ever storyboarded without even knowing what it was. You know? uh -huh. um, but yeah, I mean, that coupled with my love for sci-fi and action movies, um, not paying attention in school, you know, all that kind of- Were you the kid that was always drawing in class? Oh, dude, I got in so much trouble <laughs> in school not paying attention. Um, I think, honestly, I'll be really honest with you, from about fifth grade on, I had yeah. a lot of trouble in school because I just could not, I just couldn't pay attention. It just did not interest me at all. And they weren't talking about anything that I felt had any um, connection to me in any type mm. of way. All I wanted to do was draw and daydream and create things in my head and, and, and make them come to life somehow, you know, in, in the version of a story. Um, and it, it just consumed me. It still consumes me. Gotcha. gotcha. So you were always like a really creative person, even at a young age. You like yeah, to... Always. Mm. Yeah, either, whether it was writing or music or drawing, it was, I always had this need to, to make something, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, just get it out there because it was, it was in my head and um, you know, whatever that, that, that need or that urge is within somebody that's creative, they just have to get it out and share it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, I always wanted to pursue a, a career in art, but you know, I didn't know, uh, really what my options were even at like the college level or what direction I should go in. Uh, gotcha. Again, I knew I was a big fan of animation and telling stories, but, um, you know, at, at, even at the college level, my, I remember one of my professors telling me, um, listen, you're never going to be able to make money drawing ever or painting mm. unless unless you're dead <laughs> people start buying your work so that was a big downer and you know what my professor said after that was kind of even a bigger downer and she was like listen if you really want to draw for a living and tell people how to draw you might want to um try and pursue your master's degree in um teaching come back and teach an illustration class like me uh, okay uh -huh. I'm like no, no i don't really want to do that you know? so <laughs> yeah i didn't i was kind of bummed out because i didn't know what my options were and i didn't go to, to a traditional film school Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in college, so they were kind of, you know, their art departments weren't geared around any type of film um, experience. So uh, they were ignorant as to what um, oh, creative okay. type jobs go into production. So yeah, yeah again, I, I really had nobody giving me any information. Um, it, so, it really uh, wasn't. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was just about to ask. So, what exactly was your major in college then? I was a fine art major. Fine art. Okay, so. And, I was resigned to the to the idea of becoming like a museum curator type of guy that would take people through uh, the museum, talk okay. about the artwork. Yeah, that's what I thought I would probably end up doing. <laughs> um, but um, my life changed one day when I uh, I watched the um, uh, movie Gladiator when it came out on DVD. Uh, okay. And back then, that particular release came with a special features disc, and um, I loved that movie. I watched it like a million times, and one day I decided to put in the special features disc to see like, like you know if they had any deleted scenes or any other little tidbits of knowledge that i could kind of mine out of this and i saw one of the tab headings was storyboards and mm. i clicked on it and i just saw all this beautiful work by this artist he's a famous storyboard artist um and i was just mesmerized by it and um and the funny thing is is uh my first reaction when i looked at it was like oh i could do this <laughs> yeah because I, um, I was mostly kind of doing real hyper realistic drawings in college, like portrait type stuff, you know, uh, okay. take weeks and weeks and, you know, make it really 3D and picture looking. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't realize until I tried to draw a 
storyboards that, oh, well, you don't have photo reference anymore. Mm. And you have to draw that face. And not only do you have to draw that face, but I want that face at a three quarter low angle. Oh, and attach it to a body that's hanging off a bridge with a helicopter above it and crocodiles below it. It's like, how do I do all this out of my head? You know? Yeah. So it required like a complete retraining as far as, as drawing goes. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, after I saw that DVD, I was like, oh, I could do this. And then when I started doing it, I realized, oh no, this is gonna be a lot more difficult than, than I originally thought for a number mm. of reasons, just because of the drawing, but because of storyboarding itself is it, mm. as it's a multiple, multiple or a multidisciplinary um, job that we can, we can kind of get into that later, but. Right, right, okay. So was this mostly like, were you kind of like self-taught or um, you said uh, your college didn't really um, offer too much uh, in terms of uh, teaching this particular skill? Well, well, when you say self-taught, are you talking about the actual drawing or storyboarding? Because it's like two completely different mm, elements. That's true, that's true. Uh, I would say storyboarding. Um, yeah, storyboarding is something that I picked up on my own after I discovered what it was, kind of piecing okay. together certain books, mm. um, calling up other storyboard artists, <laughs> um, harassing a bunch of people, just <laughs> however I could get as much knowledge as I could. And to this day, I'm still getting more knowledge, you know, because now, you know, now I'm in a pipeline with other production people. Mm -hmm. you know, I can, I have kind of an overview as to, you know, where the boards go and who's making decisions about certain things and, um, you know, um, but yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Can you tell us about like the first storyboard job you ever worked on? Uh, yeah, the first job I ever had gotten was a, um, uh, was a commercial for uh, Reebok. Mm. And because uh, I, I didn't start in films, I got in through uh, advertising and commercials. That's actually my original background. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was working at this uh, little hardware store <laughs> and I closed up the shop and drove down to Santa Monica. And because uh, I, I got the call from uh, my agent and I was trying to get in with them, get my foot in the door with them for like four right. years. Wow. And, and when, that call, when that call came, I was like, all right, well, this is my opportunity. I'm shutting down the hardware store and I'm going to Santa Monica. <laughs> And I come back at the end of the day and there's like business cards on the door because I left a sign on the window that said, be back soon. And people are like, what does soon mean? And when are you coming back? And, and uh, um, yeah, luckily that job turned into another one and then another and then another. And then I just, um, I never looked back from that point. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's, that's how you got in. That was the beginning. Yeah. That was the beginning, but it took like four years to get to that point because wow. I would, I would, um, email a portfolio to these agents like every six uh -huh. months to a year and they would always shoot me down or turn mm -hmm. me down and say, oh you're getting there but you know you need a little more of this or a little more of that until one day they were under, uh they did they needed an extra gun you know and they were desperate mm -hmm. and i don't know if they were desperate but they were looking for another artist and they called me and they said hey got an opportunity for you if you want to take it gotcha and, gotcha yeah 